Jennifer Doudna. I'm a professor at University of California, Berkeley, and I study RNA molecules and how they control expression of genes and cells, and that led to our work on CRISPR biology. The CRISPR system represents a family of pathways in bacteria for fighting viral infection. CRISPR is an acronym that actually refers to a pattern of DNA sequences in the bacterial genome that is converted into RNA molecules that end up binding and destroying viral DNA sequences with the help of proteins called CRISPR-associated or Cas proteins. My name is Will Greenlee. I'm an associate professor at Stanford University in the genetics department, and my lab is really interested in how uh, changes in DNA sequence uh, relate to changes in the structure and function of biomolecules that are encoded by that DNA. CRISPR editing has been uh, clearly demonstrated in a number of different kinds of organisms, um, and it's been a powerful tool for asking targeted sort of scientific questions. What happens if I knock this gene out? What happens if I change that base? One of the things that's really important when we're talking about uh, actually using uh, therapeutics is the ability to precisely control these very powerful sort of scissors. We don't want it to run amok. We don't want it to be on all the time. We want to be able to control when and where it's active. So right now, the way this uh, technology called CRISPR-Cas9 is used in cells is with RNA molecules called single guide or SG RNAs. These are molecules of RNA that direct the Cas9 protein to particular DNA sequences for, uh, for cutting and ultimately for editing. The challenge there is that some of those sequences, for reasons we can't really predict at the moment, work better than others. So one of the challenges currently in the field is how to design the single guide RNAs that program the Cas9 enzyme for genome editing in a way that allows uh, accuracy and effectiveness of the editing. So not only can uh, Cas9 be used to cut the genome, but it's being used more and more as a means of um, localizing a protein to anywhere you want in the genome so you can encode in the guide RNA where you want the Cas9 protein to go and then it'll end up there. So we're using this incredible encoding ability of the Cas9 to, to get it to a location and then adding an extension onto that guide RNA uh, that we want to ask the eternal players to program in such a way that a small molecule can switch the state of this RNA between two different conformations. One conformation will have an MS2 binding site on it, and another conformation won't. So now what we'll have is the Cas9 localized to a specific location in the genome, and this switch at the end of the Cas9 that we can turn on or turn off at will in space and time, and recruit any protein really that we want through this MS2 interaction. So now we'll have built this platform for recruiting any protein we want at any time to any location in the genome. For me, science has always been the process of, of uh, it's been a series of puzzles that we're trying to solve. And that's what makes it fun. I also think that there's an interesting uh, interplay between um, you know, the, the process of doing science and the way that games work. When we have games that are designed around principles in biology, that at times the results that come out of those games actually guide our thinking about how nature might work. And in fact, I think they reveal patterns that sometimes we might not have thought about that are then testable. We're asking the Eternal community to design these guides because basically automation doesn't work and we need the creativity and the numbers of people associated uh, with the Eternal project to uh, give us a broad diversity of different um, guide designs. We'll be testing them and returning the results quickly to the community so that they can learn from um, their, their designs and iterate until we uh, both develop designs that work well, but also ideally develop principles for how to develop these guides and, and to couple uh, functional elements of RNA together in a productive way. I think that in the future it will be possible to have very robust rules, if you will, for how to design single guide RNAs. How do we get to those rules? I think one way to get there, potentially, is by uh, using game theory and, frankly, the input of many people to uh, come up with data that can then be tested. And I think that, you know, by, by doing this with large numbers of people, the 
possibility that whole new approaches or certainly new principles of that kind of design will emerge, I think is very high.